Welcome back, my friends. In this video, I will be reviewing Caesarea Philippi. Now, what makes this place so interesting is we know Jesus visited this area based on Matthew chapter 16 and Mark chapter 8. This was also the site where the most important question in all of humanity was first asked back in the first century and is still needing an answer by those of us living in the 21st century today. So stay tuned for that. Named by Herod the Great's son, Philip the Tetrarch, Caesarea Philippi was his capital city in the area that he ruled over. It was also known as Panias, after the Greek god Pan. Because there is no P in Arabic, the name was changed to Banias during the times of the Crusades and still has this name today. The ruins of Caesarea Philippi are located at the foot of Mount Hermon and is about an eight-minute drive east from Tel Dan. Now, like Dan, this is a beautiful site, but also like Dan, this was a site of some evil practices of pagan worship. I'm going to give a quick overview of the site and then dive into Matthew chapter 16. Here is an artist rendition of what Caesarea Philippi looked like at one time. First up is the temple of Caesar Augustus that was built by the master builder himself, Herod the Great, around 19 BC. Not much is left, but here is one of the decorative stones from that temple. Next, what would be directly behind the Temple of Augustus, is the grotto of the Greek god Pan. This Pan was a flute-playing half-goat, half-man, and supposed to be a god, with a little g, of fertility and nature. More on this cave in a moment. Next to the grotto was the court of Pan and the nymphs. Now, a nymph was a female nature deity, not a goddess, but still supposedly immortal. Here in these niches, they would have a statue of Pan, a statue of Echo, who was a mountain nymph, who Pan was in love with, and one niche had a statue of Hermes who was supposed to be Pan's father. This was believed to be built mid-first century AD, so it was probably not here at the time Jesus was in this area, and that goes for the remaining four things depicted in the recreation, all of which were built years after Jesus was here. Next is the Temple of Zeus, which was built around 98 AD, during the reign of the Roman Emperor Trajan. This is odd to me because Zeus was a Greek god and the Roman equivalent was Jupiter. I could not find anywhere why this temple wasn't built for Jupiter. Next is the court of Nemesis, a goddess of vengeance, and it was built around 178 AD. It was a narrow court with a little niche where a statue of Nemesis would be, and in front of it was a checkered pattern of stones on the ground in white and reddish color, which you can see here. Next to the court of Nemesis was the tomb temple of the sacred goats built in 220 AD. This is where goat sacrifices took place and their bones would be buried in the rectangular niches in the main hall, together with offerings of pottery, glass, vessels, and coins. And lastly, the Temple of Pan and the Dancing Goats, also built around 220 AD. Not much is left of this, and I wasn't able to get the best shots at this time because a few of us decided to quickly break away from our tour group and go explore a different path. We went through what is known as the Enchanted Forest and climbed up the uneven terrain to see what was on top. We didn't ask and probably were not supposed to hike here, but soon after this, the tour guide began referring to some of us as the overachievers. So what did we find at the end of our hike? <laughs> Look at this view. Great overview of the whole area of the Sanctuary of Pan. It's just simply incredible. Now behind us, if we had time, we could have hiked for two hours east to Nimrod's fortress. At first, I thought this was cool because Nimrod was Noah's great-grandson and listed as a mighty warrior and mighty hunter in Genesis chapter 10, verse 8. But the main part of this castle was built up during the Crusades and wasn't called Nimrod's fortress until the 1860s AD. Still, the view up here of Caesarea Philippi was amazing and many people probably don't even know about it. Now let's go back to the Grotto of Pan. To the pagans who lived here, this cave created a gateway to the underworld, also known as Hades or Hell, where Pan would live during the wintertime and return in the spring. In order to entice him to return, the people would engage in horrible deeds such as child sacrifices, prostitution, and sexual interaction with goats. With this immoral backdrop, let's look what took place in Matthew chapter 16. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. 
But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Then in verse 18 we get, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. The Greek word used for overcome is katiskula, meaning to be superior in strength. In other words, the gates of hell will not be superior in strength when the church arrives. See, gates are defensive measures to protect something within from some outside forces. So what Jesus is saying in Matthew 16, 18, is the church is supposed to be on the offensive, challenging these evil strongholds in people's lives and throughout the world. The church has the power to break down these gates and infiltrate every dark corner with a light and good news of Jesus. I really hope this adds a little bit more context to this verse, knowing Jesus said this in a city near where pagans were worshiping in such an overtly sinful way at the gates of hell. Now, after confessing that Jesus was the Messiah, Peter must have been on a spiritual high. But then shortly after this, we see Peter get rebuked by Jesus. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priest, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Now, would Jesus have walked through the area where all these pagan rituals of worship took place? Probably not. But he and his disciples would have seen this from a distance and would have known what was taking place here. Did you catch the most important question Jesus asked while he was here in Caesarea Philippi? Let's go back to Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? See, this is the most important question we will ever be asked. And how we answer this question will determine where we spend eternity after we pass on from this life. Perhaps this question hasn't been proposed to you directly. So allow me to ask it to you now. Who is Jesus to you? A nobody? Just a great teacher? Just a great prophet? Or is he the Son of God? The Messiah of the world? Your Lord and Savior? Everyone will have to answer this question at some point, so if you have an answer, please feel free to share in the comments below. This was an incredible sight, primarily because we know Jesus was here teaching his disciples and us about his divinity, but also teaching us that we, the church, are not supposed to be passive observers in this world, but that he has given us power to confront the floods of evil and darkness around us and to spread his love and light to those who are blind and in bondage by the enemy. Well, this concludes my review of Caesarea Philippi. I really hope you enjoyed it and got something from it. And in my next review, I will take you on a boat ride across the Sea of Galilee, where we know Jesus walked on water, calmed the storm, and taught. But until then, thanks for watching, and again, God bless.